spit out. And behave or interact with the people with good character. However, uh, there's another hadith, hadith 37 and 40 hadith, which I want to go over tonight instead because it has a direct, it, it also has a direct connection to fasting Ramadan. And if Allah wills, it will serve as a great motivation, a great motivation for all of us, including the young people, uh, with regard to the fasts, insha'Allah. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'a huda wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi I just need someone to be a volunteer, two people <coughs> Hand out one hadith, one handout is the hadith, and the other is supplemental. Sisters already, I've already sent some to their side. So, again, instead of doing hadith 18. Instead of Hadith 18, we're going to do Hadith 37. And if Allah wills, when Ramadan concludes, we will go to Hadith 18, go in the order, and we will even again come back to Hadith 37. But tonight I want to deal with it because there is a, a profound fa'i that I want to share with all of you. It's directly related to fasting. And uh, it will, inshallah, by the permission of Allah, uh, serve as a motivation. It will serve as a motivation. There should be enough for everybody. Okay. Hadith 37 is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas. Radiallahu anhum. May Allah be pleased with him and his father. Abdullah ibn Abbas is one of the great companions of the Prophet Sallallahu He was one of the youth from the children. And he was from the ulama, from the scholars. He was distinguished amongst the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu And his name is often repeated in the books of knowledge. In the book, any book of tafsir, any book of hadith, any book of fiqh, you're going to see this name, Abdullah ibn Abbas. And we've talked about him before. He says, Anil Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so he says, he's narrating from the Prophet Sallallahu And what he is narrating from his Lord. What hadith is this? What kind of hadith is this? When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that Allah said, what hadith is that? Hadith Qudsi. Hadith Qudsi. The, the hadith, the, most of the hadith we hear are hadith Nabawi. Meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is speaking. The companion is saying, Qala Rasulullah. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. A hadith Qudsi, the companion is saying, The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah said. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is narrating from Allah. Okay? This is a tremendous hadith. Pay very close attention to this. Allah wa Ta'ala <coughs> says, Inna Allah. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet is narrating from Allah that he said, Inna Allah katab al hasanat. Verily, Allah katab al hasanat. He wrote the, the, the hasanat, the good deeds, was sayyat, and the bad deeds. Thumma bayyana dhalika. And then he explained that. Faman hamma bi hasanatin falam ya'malha. So whoever desires to do a good deed, but was not able to do it, I mean, he didn't do it because he was not able to do it, Allah writes it down with himself as one complete hasana. And if a person intends to do it, and he actually does it, Allah 
Allah writes it down with Himself as 10 hasanat up to 700 folds or 700 times ila ab'afin kathira and more and many more. And if a person intends to do a bad deed, but he doesn't do it, meaning he chooses not to do it. He makes a decision not to do it. And he doesn't do it. Allah writes it down with himself as one complete hasana, one good deed. But if a person intends to do it, meaning that evil deed, and he actually carries it out, Allah writes it down as one sayyia, one evil deed. Rawahu al-Bukhari wa Muslim, al-Bukhari and Muslim reported it, fi sahihihima, in their two. Com compilations with these letters meaning verbatim <coughs> this hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim verbatim without any uh, differences in the wording okay I'm going to read it again in English inshallah and we got to go through it slowly remember like the Quran the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu is wahi revelation from Allah so like the Quran, you cannot just read it quickly, go over it really. You got to pay very close attention to what the Prophet ﷺ said. Every kalima kalima, right? He said, Wasallam, while narrating from his Lord, what means, Verily Allah has written down the good deeds and the bad ones. And then he explained that. When he says Allah has written down the good deeds and the bad deeds, we're talking about in the preserved tablets. And the preserved tablet that was with him. The Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, the first thing Allah created was Al-Qalam, the pen. And then he ordered the pen to write, and the pen said, What shall I write? Allah ordered the pen to write down everything that will occur up until the day of judgment. So the scholars the scholars who explain this hadith, they say that the intended meaning of verily Allah has written down the good deeds and the bad deeds, and then explain that meaning in the preserved tablet. Then he explained that. He said, He who intends to do a good deed and hasn't done it, Allah writes it down with Himself as a complete good deed. Meaning what? You intended to do it, but Allah decreed something and you were, you were not able to do it. For example, tonight you go to sleep, you intend to get up so you can pray Qiyamul Layl. However, Qadr Allah ma sha'afal, you slept past the time. According to this, you had the intention, you get the reward for having done it. This is Allah's generosity, right? To his slaves. He who intended to do a good deed and hasn't done it, Allah writes it down with himself as a complete good deed. But if he intended to do it and did do it, I mean, he, he, he went through all the way with it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala writes it down with himself. The statement writes it down with himself shows that Allah gives great care to that deed. A person may do some good, it may be small in your eyes, right? However, Allah is shakirun alim. Huh? Allah is shakirun alim. Allah is very, very yani, uh, appreciative of the good that people do, even though he doesn't need us. And he doesn't need our good deeds. So he writes it down with himself as 10 good deeds up to 700 times up to 700 times or many times over however if a person intends to do a bad deed and has not done it meaning as i said before he chooses not to do it why if you intend to do a bad deed let's say a person intends to go rob a store but on the way to rob the store a car comes and runs him over that means what? He was not able to go and rob the store because Allah willed something that prevented him. He still get the sin. He still gets the sin. He intended to do it. He didn't make a choice not to do it. The qadr of Allah, it stopped him from doing it. That's why the Prophet said, Al-Qatil wal-Maqtul. Both the killer, the murderer, and the one that was killed, 
Finnaur, are in the hellfire. They said, the Sahaba said, we understand the, the killer, but what about the one that was killed? He said he intended to kill the other. He just wasn't successful. Right? So if a person intends to do a bad deed and has not done it, Allah writes it down with himself as a complete good deed. Meaning, I mean, he chooses not to do it. But if he intended it and did do it, then Allah writes it down as one bad deed. I'm going to say some things about this hadith and then I'm going to get into what I, something that is related to this hadith that has to do with our fasting. So the first thing I want to say, brothers and sisters, may Allah bless you all. This narration is an example of Allah's rahmah, His great mercy towards Ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because had Allah not explained this, had it not been for this clarification concerning the actions, the calamity would have been greater. What does that mean? If someone employs you to do a job, they just say, do the work, you agree to work, you're going to get paid, but they don't tell you what the salary is going to be. You don't know how much you're going to get paid. First of all, are you going to even agree to that? No. Who agrees to that? <laughs> you're, going to do it, you're going to agree to do a job, you don't even know what the salary is? It could be $5 an hour. <laughs> you don't know what it is. Right? So, in, in this hadith, the Prophet is talking about actions in general. A'mal, righteous deeds in general. The general rule is that anytime you do a good deed, the minimum of the ajr is 10. And then it can go up to 700 times or more. What is it that decides whether it's going to go up to 700 or more? What is it that, what is it that uh, decides that? That's unlimited. <coughs> you said that's unlimited? Yeah. Yani, yani, one person gets 10 hasanat for doing this deed. Another person does the same action, he gets 700. What's the difference? Why this one gets the 10 and the intention? Because of the intention. What else? Because of the perfection and the what you call the ihsan. The ihsan, how he did it? What else? Actions have lost. It's lost, the level of sincerity. What else? All of this is correct. Deeds, reward uh action, the rewards of actions are multiplied for a number of reasons, including the times, like Ramadan, the month of Ramadan. Fasting by itself is, a, is from the big, big, big deeds. Outside of Ramadan, by itself. Yani fasting, whether you're doing it Mondays and Thursdays, whether you do it the, the white days, right? the, the, the 13th, 14th, and the 15th of the month. No matter what fast you're doing, fasting is big. <laughs> but fasting on Ramadan is a whole nother thing in and of itself. Yani Ramadan, that time, the deeds are, are too great, as you're going to see from tonight's class. If you didn't know before, I mean, we know this, but tonight you're going to see something perhaps you didn't know before. Inshallah. Uh, the times, look at the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. The first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, the Prophet said, there are no days in which the actions are more beloved to Allah than these 10 days. That means what? Those times. Likewise, the last third of the night, it has special virtue to it. So these are times. What about places? There are certain places wherein if you do good deeds, the reward is so big, multiplied. The Prophet said, whoever prays, one salah in his masjid, he gets, it is like he prayed how many prayers? 1,000. And then in uh, Mecca, Masjid Haram, how many? 100,000. What about Masjid Al-Aqsa, how many? 500. So these places, can you imagine, yeah, subhanAllah, you go to Mecca, when you, typically when people go to Mecca to do Umrah, even if they only stay for seven, eight days, they're going to stay in Medina for three days, and they're going to stay in Mecca for four days. Imagine you pray the Salah, all five prayers in Masjid Haram. Not just the five obligatory prayers, 
optional prayers. Because the hadith says, Man salla salatan. He didn't say, Man salla salah. Whoever prayed the salah. He said, Man salla salatan. Whoever prays a prayer. That's nakira. That includes both the obligatory and the optional. Whoever does any prayer in that masjid, it is as if he prayed 100,000 times. Imagine you were there for four days. You prayed all the five prayers. You did the janazah prayers after each salah. You did the sunnah prayers. You did tawaf. You gave sadaqah there. Even, there's, even not just the prayers are multiplied. Your sadaqah is multiplied there. Every good you do. So there are times and there are places uh, in which the deeds are multiplied. But there's something else that can also multiply the deed. Some of you mentioned sincerity and, and ikhlas. The heart, the condition of the heart of the slave. The closer a person's heart is to Allah, the more healthy the heart is. That, that person, his deeds... Even the small, tiny deeds are big in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْظُرُ إِلَى سُوَرِكُمْ وَأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَى قُلُوبِكُمْ وَعَمَالِكُمْ Allah doesn't look at your shapes, nor does He look at your wealth, but He looks at your hearts and He looks at your deeds. He looks at your hearts and your deeds. The thing that decides whether the deed is going to just be ten, up to seven hundred times, or what? أَضْعَافِ كَثِيرًا Or even more. Is what's going on inside of that heart when you're doing those deeds. Let me go to this handout. Let me show you something, inshallah. Let me share something with you. This is a, wallahi, a tremendous hadith, wallahi. In the Sahih of Imam al Bukhari and Muslim, on the authority of Abu Hurairah, another hadith Qudsi. The Prophet Sallallahu said, قَالَ اللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلْ Allah the Mighty and Majestic says, كُلُّ عَمَلْ إِبْنِ آدَمْ لَهُ Every action of the son of Adam belongs to him. إِلَّا السَّوْمْ Except for fasting. فَإِنَّهُ لِي For verily it belongs to me, وَأَنَا أَجْزِي بِهِ And I will give the reward for it. وَالصِّيَامُ جَنَّةِ جُنَّةِ and, and fasting is a jannah, it is a shield. وَإِذَا كَانَ يَوْمْ سَوْمِ أَحَدُكُمْ فَلَا يَرْفَ وَلَا يَسْخَمْ فَإِنْ سَابَهُ أَحَدْ أَوْ قَاتَلَهُ فَلْيَكُلْ إِنِّي إِمْرِ إِنْ صَائِمْ وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي مُحَمَّدِ وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي مُحَمَّدِ بِيَدِهِ لَخُلُوفِ فَمِ الصَّائِمْ أَطْيَبْ عِنَّ اللَّهِ مِنْ رِيحِ الْمِسْكِ لِلصَّائِمْ فَرْحَتَانِ يَفْرَحُهُمَا إِذَا أَفْطَرَ فَرَح وَإِذَا لَقِيَ رَبَّهُ فَرَحَ بِصَوْمِهِ Allah glorified as He, the exalted, says, All the actions of the son of Adam are for him except fasting. Indeed, it is for me, and I will give the reward for it. Then He said, Fasting is a shield. So when one of you is fasting, then let him not say obscene speech or make too much noise. And if someone insults him or fights him, then let him say, I am fasting. For verily I swear by the one in whose hand is the soul of Muhammad, the, the smell that comes from the mouth of a fasting person is more pleasant in the sight of Allah than the smell of musk. Let's stop here for a moment. Some people use this hadith to say that you cannot brush your teeth when fasting. This is wrong. In fact, many scholars of hadith say that the intended meaning of the smell coming from their mouth is on the day of judgment. Just like the blood of the shaheed will have a smell on the day of judgment. The Prophet said his blood will smell like musk on the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah. Many scholars say that the intended meaning of the, the smell coming from the mouth is on the day of Yom Al-Qiyamah when the slave meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will love this smell coming. He will have a pleasant smell coming from his mouth. Let's continue. He says, the fasting person has two moments of joy. One, when he breaks his fast, as he feels happy, and the other, when he meets his Lord, he is happy with his fast. This is the version that's in uh, uh, Bukhari, a Muslim. There's another hadith similar to this that's in Sahih Muslim. And before I share this hadith with you, you have it in front of you, I want to just say something. One of the most distinguished scholars 
in Islamic history. When it comes to explaining the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, was Al Hafid ibn Rajab Al Hanbali. Anyone ever heard of his name? I mentioned his name last week. I said he died in 795 Hijri. Ibn Rajab did something that is very beautiful and unique in his books. Imam al Shankiti, the scholar of tafsir, what did I tell you about this tafsir? What makes this tafsir unique? Who remembers? He used the Quran. He used the Quran. He, Imam Shankiti would explain the Quran with other parts of the Quran. The scholars say this is the highest level of tafsir. Not many people do this. Shankiti did it. Most books of tafsir, they use the Quran, they use hadith, they use the statements of the Sahaba, they use the Arabic language. Imam al-Shankiti, for the most part, he used the Quran. al hafiz ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, he does the same thing with the Sunnah. He will, t he, he will bring a hadith, right? And then he will do research and look for all of the other hadith that are similar to it, that have maybe slight different wordings or additional wordings that help provide clarity huh, to that hadith. And he does it here. Watch this. This narration, the next narration is in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, Kullu amal ibn Adam yudaaf. All of the actions of the son of Adam are multiplied. Al-hasana bi'ashari amthaliha. A single good deed is worth ten times ila sab'i mi'at dhu'f up to seven hundred times. And then, in this hadith, call Allah Ta'ala, Allah says, illa sawm, except fasting. Fa innahu li, for verily it belongs to me. Wa ala ajazi bihi, and I will, re I will give the reward for it. Yada'u shahwatahu wa ta'amahu min ajli. The person who's fasting, he abandoned his desire and his food for my sake. Think about that for a moment. No one really knows whether or not you're fasting. You could go in the bathroom and eat. It's just like wudu. How do I know you broke your wudu? How do I know you have wudu? Wudu is a secret between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no one who knows whether or not you have wudu. Likewise, no one knows... Uh, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether or not you are fasting in this hadith Allah wa ta'ala is saying the person who fasting abandons his shahwa his desire and his food for my sake and then he says well is saw any farhatan for the one who is fasting there are two mo moments of joy one moment of joy is when he breaks his fast. It's a very happy time. You've been fasting all day. MashaAllah, the nice food is there, the nice drink is there, the good smell is there. You're happy, alhamdulillah. And the second moment of happiness is when you meet Allah. This hadith that I just shared with you is similar to the hadith 37. Wherein the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever intends to do a good deed and does it, he gets 10 up to... 700 times or more. This hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, all of the actions of the son of Adam are multiplied from 10 up to 700 times or more. But in this Qudsi hadith, brothers and sisters, pay very close attention. Allah says, illa sawm, except fasting. Fasting doesn't have that uh, 10 to 700 times. No, no. Oh no. <laughs> Fasting, Allah says, it belongs to me, I'm going to give the reward for it. This, you know, <laughs> let us not forget who is saying that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a human being said to you, listen brother, if you come and you do X, Y, and Z, you do a good job, don't worry, I'm going to take care of you. That's something good. He's going to make you happy. That means not only am I going to compensate you, but I'm going to compensate you in a way that's going to make you happy. That's a human being. وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى To Allah belongs a higher example. <laughs> Look what Allah says. Allah says in Surah An-Nisa, verse 100. وَمَنْ يَخْرُجْ مِنْ بَيْتِهِ 
whoever leaves out from his house, muhajiran ilallahi wa rasulihi, migrating to Allah and His Messenger, thumma, and then yudrikhu al maut, and then death catches him. فَقَدْ وَقَعَ أَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ His reward has already been established with Allah. He didn't mention the reward. He just said his reward is on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is similar to fasting. Some scholars say, pay attention to this. This is the motivation. This is the motivation to fast. Not just in Ramadan, but outside of Ramadan. Some scholars say, the intended meaning of... <coughs> Fasting belongs to me. And I'm going to give the reward for it. They say that on the Day of Judgment, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said on the Day of Judgment, there are some people who are going to come and they're going to be muflis, muflisun, bankrupt. He said, uh, he asked the Sahaba, do you know who the muflis is? Who the bankrupt person is? He said, yeah, that's the one who don't have any money. He said, no. The muflis is the one who's going to come on the Day of Judgment with salah, with sadaqah. Huh? Huh? With good deeds. But he what? He harmed this one. He oppressed this one. He hit this one. Huh? He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on a day of judgment, those people whom he oppressed, those people whom he oppressed, they will come and they will take from his hasanat. They will keep taking until they get what is due to them. And if he runs out, what's going to happen? The Prophet also said that his bad deeds, or their, their bad deeds, they will take their bad deeds and give them to him. Sheikh Saleh al-Fawzan, Hafizahullah, and many other scholars, but from the contemporary scholar Sheikh Saleh al-Fawzan, he said, based on the hadith I just shared with you, that people will be able to take from all of your hasanat, but there's one deed that they cannot take from, and that's fasting. As so, they will not be able to take from fasting because it doesn't belong to you. The hadith said, "Kullu amal ibn Adam lahu." All of the actions of the son of Adam lahu, they belong to him. Illa except as so, except fasting. Say in nahu li, it belongs to me. So the people on the day of judgment, this is the one action. This is the one action, despite, and may Allah make us of those who, when we leave this world, we don't owe no one anyone, Amen. anything. Amen. That we don't have no one who has anything over our heads. Amen. You know, we haven't oppressed anyone. We've Amen. sought forgiveness from them. We've reconciled. May Allah, this is, hadith is not a, a justification for oppressing people. But this hadith, brothers and sisters in Islam, is... A motivation to fast as much as possible because this is the one deed that no one can take from. No one can take from. The Prophet also mentioned that the Quran, that some Quran, uh, uh, the Quran and fasting will come on a day of judgment and they will intercede on behalf of its people. This fasting is a big deal. Listen to this. Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, he says in other works of his, but when I read this the first time, I read it from Sheikh Adil al-Sayyid, so I mentioned his name here. By the way, anytime you record the benefits, you should always put down the name of the person who you got it from. You should never pass a fa'ida along that is not very popular amongst the people, as if it is something you thought of or came with. You should always attribute it back to the one who said it. Uh, this is from good mannerisms with the scholars. Anyways, Ibn Rajab, he said, I'lam. No. Know that fasting is patience upon obedience to Allah. And it is also patience in staying away from what Allah prohibited. And it is also patience upon the 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 decrees of Allah that are mu'lima, distasteful, yani inconvenience. 
min al jor from hunger, wal atush and thirst, wa da'af al badan and weakness of the body. فقد اجتمعت فيه أنواع الصبر الثلاثة. Fasting involves all three types of sabr. Sabr, patience, is of three types. A sabr على طاعة الله, obedience upon obedience to Allah. A sabr عن محارم الله, patience and staying away from what Allah prohibited. والصبر على أقدار الله, impatience with the decrees of Allah. All three types are involved when we fast. وتحقق فقد فقد اجتمعت فيه أنواع الصبر الثلاثة. so fasting involves all three types of sabr. وتحقق أن يكون الصائم من الصابرين. and the one who is fasting is considered to be from who a sabirin, the patience. what did Allah say about the sabirin in سورة الزمر verse ten. إنما يوفى الصابرون أجرهم بغير حساب. Allah says, only those who endure patiently will be given their reward without measure. Without measure. Without measure. <clears throat> we don't know what is the full reward for the fasting. We don't have a clue. It's been left a secret that Allah kept hidden. So this is an encouragement, uh, brothers and sisters, for the fast, especially on the days when we're feeling lazy, we're feeling weak, you know, have to keep going. Allah says, Neither their meat nor their blood will reach Allah, but what, re what reaches Him is the taqwa, the piety from you. Where's the taqwa? The taqwa is here. In the hearts. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah he said, فإن الأعمال تتفاضل بتفاضل ما في القلوب من الإيمان والإخلاص. Deeds earn different levels of reward based on the iman and the sincerity in one's heart. He said, two people might be praying in the same row, yet the difference between their prayers is like the distance between the heavens and the earth. <laughs> Like the distance between the heavens and the earth. He says, Rahimahullah, Al A'malu Sawabuha Laysa Li Mujarradi Suwariha. Actions and their rewards aren't merely based on their apparent form. Bal li haqa ikiha alati fi kurub. Rather, their reward is dependent upon the realities which are in the hearts. Wan nasu yatafadaluna fi dali katafadila nadima. And the people, and the people vary in this regard tremendously. And he mentioned uh, some other things in this regard. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Hadith 37, I, again, I chose it tonight because it is a motivation. It is a motivation. It is a motivation to prepare yourself, not just physically, but more importantly, mentally. Get yourself, get your mind ready to fast this noble month of Ramadan and make sure that your intention is good. Also make sure that you make tawbah to Allah. Make a sincere tawbah to Allah for what you know you're doing wrong specifically and, and make a general tawbah to Allah for whatever it is that maybe you're oblivious about, maybe you forgot about. So that during this month you will remove from yourself all of the weight of dhunub, of sins. One of the reasons we feel lazy during Ramadan is because we have weight on us from the sins we have with us. You know, <clears throat> this is important that we think, that, think about these things. Um, I will mention a couple of other things related to Hadith 37. The Prophet said, whoever intends a, to do a bad deed but doesn't do it, he gets a, a complete reward. So, why is it, what, what is it that would cause a Muslim not to do the deed, the, a bad deed? What would make him change his mind about it? Taqwa. Committing the sin. Taqwa. What else? Fear of Allah. What else? Reminder. Reminder. Love of Allah. Um, fear of the punishment of Allah. So, although on the surface, this person is not doing 
that bad deed, what he's being rewarded because of the reason for which he's not doing the bad deed, which is in the heart, the action in the heart. The fear of Allah comes between him and doing that sin. And it stops him. Just like the boy who, as the Prophet also mentioned in one hadith, the boy, he had a beautiful cousin, a young girl. She was very, very beautiful, and he desired his cousin badly. And he always was trying to make advances towards her, and she would turn him down. And then one day, he wanted, uh, she came to him because she needed help, financial help. And he told her, I'll help you with the condition that you agree to do this fahisha with me. And she agreed. The Prophet also mentioned that the, they came together and before he went through with the whole act, she told him, she reminded him about Allah. Fear Allah, don't, don't go through it. So he stopped. He left the money with her and he didn't go through with that action. So he get the reward for the salaka that he gave, but even greater than that, he get the reward because of the taqwa that was in his heart that prevented him from going through with something that he originally intended to do. This is something that we all have to be conscious of and we have to remind ourselves of or remind our children of, and that is this issue of delayed gratification. Gra many of our children, people in general, but especially the younger people, their shahwa, their desire is oftentimes, most of the time, much stronger than the desire of the older people. Right? And the shaitan, when he's pushing and trying to encourage you to commit a sin, whether it be zina, whether it be to deal with usury, riba, whether it be uh, to open a business in which you're selling haram, when he's trying to push you to do it, most of the time, what are we thinking about? We're thinking about the immediate benefit, the immediate gratification. What does Allah say so often in the Quran? وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ In the end, the final outcome huh? is for who? The muttaqeen. That's what we got to always remind ourselves. A wise man said, disciplining oneself to delayed gratification is the indispensable prerequisite for success. You cannot be successful in this life, let alone in the hereafter, unless you can discipline yourself to delay gratification. Even if you look at it in terms of dunya, most successful business owners, when they first started, they were not successful. Probably not even going to what? Not even going to make a lot of profit. You're going to make money to put back in. But if you be patient and you hang in there and you stick with it, you're going to be successful. And all of that delayed gratification and sacrifice and patience is going to what? It's going to pay off. Likewise, Ya Abdullah, Ya Amatullah, here in this dunya, here in this dunya, you want to do, you want to look at haram, you want to listen haram, you want to go places you shouldn't be going, always remind yourself, if I do this, yes, I might get some immediate gratification. But it's going to be followed by what? Regret, shame, loss, humiliation. And if I withhold, just be patient and fear Allah. And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ He does not call the, re the reward of the good, deeds or the good doers to go to waste. One of the salaf, he was a student of knowledge and he was very, very hungry, as many of them used to be hungry. People of the past, people of knowledge, many of them, they were not wealthy. Some of them were, mashallah. Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, his father, left behind a lot of wealth for Imam al-Bukhari. Imam al-Bukhari even had a scribe, he hired him. But some people, many of them, they did not have wealth like that. So this one individual, one day, he passed by an area and he smelled some really, really nice food. And no one was around. And he wanted to go in and taste some of this food and have some. He was hungry. But he 
didn't do it. Doesn't belong to him. It didn't belong to him, so he didn't do it. Later this day, he gets an invitation to come to have dinner at someone's home. He goes to this home to have dinner, and as he goes into the home, he realizes the same smell that he's smelling in the home is the, is the smell he smelled earlier from the food. When he sits down in his home, he, they offer him the food, and the, the sheikh of the home, he invited him to the house, not just to offer him food, but also he wanted to offer his daughter in marriage to him. So not only did he marry the, agree to marry the girl, he get the wife that day, but he was able to also eat from the very food that he originally wanted to eat, but he left it for the sake of Allah because it didn't belong to him. Yeah. Anyone who gives up something for the sake of Allah, Allah will replace it with something that's better. And if you don't believe that, you have a bad opinion about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyone who forsakes something for the sake of Allah, Allah will replace it with something that is better. So, again, this, is, this will not be a habit. Usually, we're going to go in the order of the book. Hadith 18 and Hadith 19. But tonight, I said, I came across this benefit. I said, I really want to share this with the brothers. So, I look. What Hadith in the 40 Hadith that I could share this benefit with? Oh, Hadith 37. And, and this goes to show you what I said in the beginning. The 40 hadith of Imam al nawi these hadith are considered qawa'id kulliya, general principles. Nothing occurs in life except that you can find one of these hadith that can be applied to it. That is the benefit and that is the reason why we chose this hadith. Beautiful thing about the 40 hadith is that you cannot classify it in one category. It's not just an aqidah class. It's not just a fiqh class. It's not just a tafsir class. It's not just a seerah class. You get all of those benefits from the 40 hadith. And no, I'm saying it because when we first started, one of the brothers, he asked, why is it that we are choosing these 40 hadith? What make these hadith so special? All right? Are there any questions from anyone? Inshallah. Yes, go our heart is, our club is hard, hard, like hardest. Mm. For 12 months, we gave one month Ramadan. Mm. Our Imam, I request our Mursi committee, mostly our second president. We get 12 months, Ramadan is one month. We get four Juma. Mm. Subject wise, the um, mixer, khutbah, only Ramadan. Mm. You understand? I, I, I get the general gist of what you're Generally. Saying. No. Generally, only <coughs> four Juma, only subject wise, khutbah, mm. the mm. only. Siyam. Siyam. Can someone explain it better? Like, and... He's trying, he's trying, he's trying, to, he's trying to, say, to say like uh, yeah. to the Muslim community to request uh, to the Muslim community that the subject of the khutbah should be the uh, only for uh, only regarding <coughs> Ramadan. Ramadan. Regarding Ramadan. Ramadan. Before the Ramadan month. Mm -hmm. No problem. Yeah, that's something you can speak to the Imam about. Inshallah. Believe it or not, all the topics, I sometimes, even when I'm not here, I, listen, I go back on Facebook and listen to uh, part of the khutbah khut that the imam or whoever does here. Alhamdulillah, the, the topics are usually on point. They're timely, mashallah. They're very good. And um, all of these things are connected. Because Ramadan is really about taqwa. That's what Ramadan is about. Ramadan is about taqwa. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. Thank you for always bringing these nice reminders to us. Uh, one of the sisters said, you said that if you intend to do a bad deed, but you don't do it. But in the 37th hadith it says that, if a person desires to do a bad deed, and then he doesn't do it, Allah writes it down as a good uh, deed. So, in the hadith 37, it says, whoever desires to do a bad deed, 
but doesn't do it. Allah writes it down as a complete good hasana. We explain why that is. He's getting a complete hasana tan kamila, a complete hasana, because of the reason for which he did not do the bad deed. The reason he didn't do the bad deed was because of his fear of Allah, because of his fear of the punishment of Allah, because of his love of Allah and him desiring the reward of Allah. So because of that action that was going on in the heart, al khasha wal khawf, fear, taqwa, he didn't do this action. However, we also explain, if the reason he didn't do the action was because Allah decreed something and, that, and it prevented him from doing it, he doesn't get a hasana. He doesn't get any good deed. Why? Because he intended to do it. The only reason he didn't do it was because something stopped him from doing it. He couldn't go through with it. So there's a difference between these two people. On the surface, they seem to be the same. They didn't do the bad deed. But when we look at the underlying reason, look what Allah says. And in the akhirah, al-ahkam al-akhirah, the rulings of the hereafter, are connected to the heart. Ahkam al-dunya, they're connected to what is apparent. This is why Allah says, Yawma tubala sara'ir. The day we're in, the secrets will all come out. The Prophet said in the hadith, Yuva'asu nas ala niyatihim. The people will be resurrected upon their hidden intentions. So in this life, things are based upon what's apparent, but in the scales of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, things are based upon the hidden reality. So if a person doesn't do a bad deed because he fears Allah, because he knows that whoever forsakes something for the sake of Allah, Allah replaces it with something better, that person has that ma'jur, he's rewarded. He's the one the Prophet ﷺ is talking about in this hadith, that he's going to get hasanatan kamila. As for the one who doesn't do the bad deed because he was prevented from doing it, guy got hit by a car, he couldn't rob it, he couldn't rob the store. He's still a thief, even if he didn't go through it, because the car hit him, the qadr. The qadr came between him and him fulfilling the action. Hopefully that's clear. This is a good question. Thank you for asking. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, what are the fawaid of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? هل يحق لي أن أصوم يوم الاثنين بما أننا أصوم الاثنين والخميس؟ يعني يعني والنفرض إنه سوف يكون رمضان يوم الثلاثاء القادم. أيوة. فهل يحق لي أنا أصوم قبله بيوم يوم الاثنين بما أننا متعود على الاثنين والخميس؟ نعم يجوز يجوز لأن هذا من عادتك أما الذي يعني. يعني غير متعود على هذا فلا يجوز له لأن هذا يدخل تحت الصوم في يوم الشك فهمت الكلام فهمت كلامي صحيح يعني عموما لا يجوز الصيام في يوم الشك يوم الشك هو اليوم الذي قبل رمضان إلا من كان متعود إلا من كان متعود جزاك الله خير The brother is asking a question he's saying that if, let's say, for example, the first day of Ramadan is Tuesday and not Monday. Let's say the first day is Tuesday. And the person is accustomed to fasting on Mondays and Thursdays. Is it blameworthy for this brother to fast this Monday? And the answer is no, inshallah. And that is because the Prophet ﷺ prohibited fasting the day of doubt for everyone except the person who was accustomed to fasting. Those days. Alright? Clear, inshallah? If you're not from the people who normally fast Mondays and Thursdays, this Monday you should not fast. Why? Because this Monday would be considered Yom Ashek, the day of doubt. And the Prophet ﷺ prohibited that. Alright? You understood? Yes. But if you fast in Monday and Tuesday, uh, Monday and Tuesday, you can fast. Yes. yes. Only the people that only the people that are not accustomed to doing that, that prohibition of the Prophet is applicable to them. All right. Very good question. Yeah. 
سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك